Hi, so sorry I haven't posted in a couple days or a week. 13 reasons why I came out, so I had to watch that. Anyway, on to the topic at hand. So about a week ago, I met up with my friend who's a professional producer and a professional guitarist. Not only that, He's a friend. I said that. But if you've seen this video, you probably remember this guitar. And the reason I bring it up is because Corey is the one that gave me this. So, you know he has good taste. But no, he's actually super qualified. He's been making music for over 10 years. He's a manager at a studio. He's produced album upon album upon album. He knows what he's talking about. So, that's a nice change of pace for this channel. Now, to be honest with you, I've never interviewed someone before, so this was new to me, but this is part one of a two-part series. In this part, I'm gonna be asking questions about production that I had as, you know, a beginner producer. In tomorrow's part, part two, I asked some questions about, you know, being a professional guitarist. Let's just, so let's just get into it. That's the one. Oh my god, Corey's here. So as you guys know, Corey's quite the, uh... Professional. Professional. Beforehand, I prepared a few questions for Corey. Uh, he hasn't seen them yet, so... Professional. Yeah. So, he hasn't seen them yet, so we'll know if he's actually good at his job. Okay, <laughs> that's, that's what I have prepared. So, Corey, what advice and recommendations do you have for aspiring producers? Hmm, just do it. Anyone with a MacBook already has the software they need to make music. Take a stab at it, try and make some music, try and record yourself, and then go from there. And also collaborate with people that know more than you. Oh my god. Like this. <laughs> I'm helping Corey out today. He knows more than I do, so I'm learning. Next question. What are some common mistakes beginner producers make? I mean everything, but that's how you learn. I guess one of the biggest things relating to myself would be like spending too much time on one project. I think it's really, really important to start something, try and finish it, and then move on to the next thing. Make a song, upload it to YouTube, have uh, everyone criticize you, learn, and make it better. I've said some of that stuff before, so. What ruins a good mix? How do you fix it or avoid it? A good mix is subjective, but I think what makes, I guess, a good production, so like a start to finish, is having a clear goal of what you want to achieve at the start. So by the end of the process, even before you start mixing, by the time you are done recording it, it already sounds close to the final product. That's super important. What ruins it? First of all, when it comes to mixing, you are totally at the mercy of the source material. So if it's poorly recorded or the arrangement doesn't make sense or whatever, it's going to limit my ability to create uh, what I would deem a successful mix. Another thing too, relating to my first answer, is if you spend too much time on a mix. It's really, really easy to try and overcorrect something if you spend too much time on it. So make decisions quickly when you record something. If it sounds good and it feels good, it probably sounds good and feels good. Is it possible to get a professional sounding recording in a bedroom? How slash what equipment is important? Yeah, the answer would be yes. Again, it's totally subjective. So like professional is kind of a weird term to use. Like, how do you define a professional recording, right? Like a lot of bands that I listen to, from a technical aspect, everything's distorted, scratchy, and totally blown out, but that's what they're going for. So is that professional, is that not professional? You can get professional sounding vocals with very, very cheap and expensive gear in this day and age. At home, I use a little two channel interface that costs maybe $200, Canadian. I think it's called a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Focusrite, if you're listening, I'd appreciate some money. Me too. Go buy yourself an SM57. It's a cheap microphone that's been used for decades, probably on some of your parents' favorite recordings and just start recording. You can make pro results with it. Try and kill the reflections in the room as much as possible, both listening back to music and for recording it. You wanna kill the room as much as possible. It's pretty inexpensive to create sound baffles. There's a million different videos on YouTube, but most people don't wanna make a trip to the hardware store. So find a corner and just stuff it with blankets and pillows. Have that behind you. So say I'm recording vocals, go to the corner of the room, put blankets, pillows, anything you can behind you. And what that does is as you're singing and you're hitting the far wall, and it's coming back, instead of hitting the wall behind you and reflecting back into the microphone, creating like a bad slapbacky sound, it'll just be totally killed by the pillows behind you. I'm already not. What ruins a good recording? Like there's the obvious answers of like click bleed, someone talking in the room when they shouldn't be and stuff like that. To kind of change your question a little bit, what ruins a recording session is working really slowly, trying to 
fight the artist on a lot of things if you think that you think if you know better negative people in the room even if it's a bandmate that's being like really hard on the singer or something like that it's a good way to derail and kill a session eating too much food will slow you down surprisingly oh no i heard a producer say that once and i was like holy crap that's so true i do that all the time and i hate it so that didn't answer your question do you ever like record everyone at once in an actual album like is that an actual thing it is totally dependent on what you want to achieve if you want it to sound like a live recording like that, there's a sound, there's a feel, there's an energy. You have to take that approach to do that. If you want it to sound totally tight and locked in, the reality is not every musician within every single band is a pro. Sometimes you can do drums and bass together, which is commonly referred to as like recording the rhythm section. But again, it's totally dependent on the result that you want to achieve. Yeah. I find, say like I'm recording guitar separately from vocals, tracking, I find when I'm singing like it doesn't sound the same as if I were actually playing at the same time. Like why is that? How do I avoid that? Well, the reason why it sounds different is because you are doing it differently, right? If you're recording acoustic guitar and singing, acoustic guitar, okay, let's say you're recording acoustic guitar and you're singing and you're trying to do it to a click track or something like that. If you record the acoustic guitar, you're going to record it and keep punching in until you get it perfectly. So you're going to get this robotic. It's not gonna be fully robotic but you're gonna get this let's call it perfect take and then you have the ability to record the vocal over it, and then you record the vocal until you're satisfied with it the product isn't a natural you just playing that's why it sounds different because it's like more of a calculated perfected able to do it again sound instead of just like this is me playing on my couch for vocals what's the best way to do it like one take through or should you like focus on a section get it right focus on a section get it right a lot of times i like to go part by part tackle the verse tackle the chorus let's tackle verse two let's tackle the bridge let's tackle whatever and what i'll normally do is i'll get the singer to do a guide track they just go start to finish super rough but it's just to kind of get an idea of where everything is and then you have to be conscious of how you want to layer it if you want to add harmonies or octaves or whatever and then on top of all that say you're doing a fast-paced song there might be vocal lines that you want to sound super powerful when you're singing it there's like breaths in awkward spots what i like to do i call it ones and threes or do a line skip a line i'll get you to sing the first line skip the second line sing the third line skip the fourth oh. line and then we'll do another take where you skip the first do the second skip the third do the fourth and then you don't have awkward breaths but you don't have the awkward like, <gasps> that's actually normally how i approach most of it okay last question for the producer stuff is somewhere in here what's something every producer should know there's a lot of things what like what angle something inspirational something to get the producers producing but also there be will, realistic about it. There will always be people better than you. I said inspirational. At something. You will never be the best at everything. So it's really, really important to collaborate with people that have a different skill set so you can learn from them and they can learn from you. And then you will grow and be the best that you can be. Welcome back. No, I know that was different from the usual videos I do on this channel. I'm always trying to try new stuff, so. Part two is gonna be tomorrow, uh, where I ask Corey questions about his career as a guitarist and all that cool stuff. I'll see you then. Yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this type of video. Anyway, no, seriously, thanks for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. Hey, I would throw it all away. I just keep on wishing that the money might stay. You ain't never care.